and we've talked a little bit about this, but I want to know how far this goes, right? Mm. What is the scale of consequences for Donald Trump continuing to violate the gag order? Mm. Because it doesn't seem like anybody has it in them. He's, he's been violating gag orders like crazy, right? He's just, he's, he's, a, he's a dog chasing cars. He doesn't know what he's going to do, but he's just going to keep chasing the cars. So no one's throwing him in jail. People have penalized him. They said it's bad. They give him a smack on the wrist and he keeps going. What could actually happen here? What's the worst that could happen to him if he continues to violate the gag order? And heaven forbid, something dangerous ends up happening. The short answer and the immediate answer to your question is he could go to jail. He could be incarcerated. Um, and that is allowed for under the New York laws and applicable procedures. It's a fine up to $1,000 each time, but it also can be a fine and jail or a fine or jail. Putting it into context, Jason, the other times that he violated gag orders, for example, Justice and Goron's gag order where he got deemed $15,000 or whatever, that was in a civil fraud case. This is a criminal right. case. And that is why you see what Renata pointed out earlier in this hour, that the judge is not allowing the, the defense to get the names of these witnesses in advance because of a fear of what Donald Trump is going to do. I know a lot of people who are tuning in and watching right now are very impatient and they don't understand why Judge Marchand hasn't done anything yet. But I want to reassure people that on Tuesday, there is a process and a procedure by which this contempt hearing has to be taken place. Under the rules and the law, you actually have to have an evidentiary hearing. It cannot just be the judge saying, I'm holding you in contempt of court, have a nice day. You have to afford Donald Trump, and I know it sounds unfair, but it's the way that due process is. You have to afford Donald Trump the opportunity at an evidentiary hearing to be able to show cause, meaning prove or show why he should not be held in contempt of court, because that is what the prosecution is seeking in this instance. And that is what is going to happen on Tuesday. And that is why Judge Marchand today took all of those violations of the gag order and said, I'm putting them all to be heard on Tuesday morning, and that's going to be done in the morning. I would also note, Jason, another kind of component that's happening here is, you know, when when our colleague Yasmin Basugian interviewed one of those excused jurors, she said, and I know we all laugh about it, she said, he looked less orange in person. Now, I, I beg to differ, I don't know if he looks less orange, but the reality is she's seeing a man that is forced to have to sit in court and you take away all of the bluster and you take away all of this idea in the, in the public, in the media about what a big guy this guy is. And he's just this old dude sitting there looking orange and tired. And what it does, though, is I think it recalibrates everybody from the judge to the lawyers to the jurors to understand he's just a guy. He is not a deity. He is not a cult leader. He is just a man who has violated the laws. And just like all of us that violate a law, there's going to be consequences. So when he violates a gag order, the judge is going to say, you know what? You're not learning your lesson, and I can put you in jail. Or I can take you out of court. I can make you sit privately somewhere else where you cannot be in the courtroom. I won't let you have access to a phone. I mean, there's remedies there, Jason, and we're going to see exactly what happens when we have that hearing on Tuesday.